Discerning Hearts provides content dedicated to those on the spiritual journey. To continue production of these videos, prayers, and more, go to discerninghearts.com and click the donate link found there or inside the free Discerning Hearts app to make your donation. Thanks and God bless. Discerninghearts.com presents Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. Monsignor Essif is a priest of the Diocese of Scranton, Pennsylvania. He has served as a retreat director and confessor to St. Teresa of Calcutta. He continues to offer direction and retreats for the Sisters of the Missionaries of Charity. Monsignor Essif encountered St. Padre Pio, who would become a spiritual father to him. He has lived in areas around the world, serving in the Pontifical Missions, a Catholic organization established by Pope St. John Paul II to bring the good news to the world, especially to the poor. He continues to serve as a retreat leader and director to bishops, priests, and sisters, seminarians, and other religious leaders. Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. You have just heard the reading of the Gospel for the first Sunday of Advent. Jesus is telling us, his disciples, that these days are dominated by the truth that this world is going to end, and all of us must be prepared to be what when he comes, to be united with him. All through this past year, our whole podcast has been centered on the truth, the reality, that Christ is in me through my baptism. We are the body of Christ. In the epistle of today's Mass in the Romans, in the 13th chapter, Paul says to the Christians, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the desires of the flesh. The union between the soul and Christ is what is our salvation. If we are not united with him and he with us, we are going to be left behind. When you hear Jesus say, two will be in the field, one will be taken the other will be left. What does that mean? That our being prepared is what? Is our union with him. He is in me. There is only one Savior of the world. From the beginning of Adam and Eve until Jesus Christ, no one had been able to gain salvation. When Jesus came into the world, he became our salvation. When he was 33 years old, he suffered, he died, and he rose. Then he united himself with his people through baptism. Wait until the power of the Holy Spirit comes, he says. So after he suffered, died, and rose, he went back to heaven where he is now, that body that we in, in, celebrate that he took at Christmas time is now at the right hand of the Father. He then sent the Holy Spirit upon the apostles, transformed them into himself, united them with himself, and then through water and the Holy Spirit, united 3,000 at the beginning of the church until now that body is one billion Catholics, all those of you who are Protestants, all of you who are Orthodox, and on that day, he also sent the Holy Spirit into the entire world. Our union with him is essential to our salvation. He alone is the Savior. So as we begin this celebration of a new year of grace, We're going to begin again the story of our salvation, that Jesus is saying this world, as we know it, is going to pass. Our union with him is so essential. What is the tragedy 
how do we get separated from him? Why is it that people can't see Christ in me? Because of my sinfulness. If you are in sin, you are separated from him. We are detached from him. We are separated from him. We are left behind. We are dead. And so what is the strong encouragement during this whole season of Advent to become one with him in love and virtue? To become one with him to so that I, when Christmas Day comes, that those separations that happen in us and in every family, I will now ask our Lord, please, Lord, help me to become one with you. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul says in the letter to the Romans in today's Mass. And how are we going to receive this union with him? A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced. The day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The Word of the Lord. So how am I going to conduct myself in preparation for Christmas? Let us conduct ourselves properly, not in promiscuity and lust. What's my relationship with regard to pornography with Jesus? Have I brought this to him? Do I have this kind of addiction? Not in rivalry and jealousy. When we just pick up the paper, as a family of nations, when I, when I look around the world and we hear of a nuclear buildup, when we hear about the potential for nuclear war, this world of ours, it, he wants us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for darkness and the flesh. Can it be that this Christmas could bring peace to the world, Isaiah, in his vision of when the, when the Messiah comes, he says, for from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on all of the many people. Jesus is the king of peace. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another. Could this be the time when God will send us peace? Do you hear the sound of the angels at Christmas? Do you see the, what we're talking about at the beginning of this Advent season, could we all pray and begin our Advent with yearning and desire and perseverance in prayer for peace? Jesus is coming. He is coming to establish a kingdom of peace. He is coming to establish a kingdom of love. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This promise of Isaiah, they will beat their swords into plowshares. This yearning and cry, Jesus can bring about a world of peace. Could this cry come from 
all of us that we will personally commit ourselves to a kingdom of love, a kingdom of peace, no matter where we are or what is our religion. We can be sons and daughters of God. Paul says this can come through the one who has come into the world. I am the light of the world, Jesus said. I am coming into the darkness. Yes, the darkness refused the light, but the light was not overcome by the darkness. We have a new season, a new opportunity, a new year of grace. This is going to be a year of love, a year of peace. How do you know that? God promised it. He will give it. And we are to call upon him and beg him for this particular year. And it can happen when I begin to find that light within myself. I noticed at the beginning of this year, of this new year of grace, yesterday, I found in myself there was something really bothering me. And for a long time, I had been ignoring this grace that was coming to me. I called this priest, and I wanted to go to confession. It was was a marvelous, marvelous confession. This light came into me. I was was seeing something that I had put off for a long time. And I was able to find a light, another peace, another depth. I'm baptized, I'm confirmed, I'm ordained, I receive communion every day. But can he come more deeply? Yes. And when I discovered this darkness, this secret in me that had to be removed, I brought it to confession. There's nothing, you know, confession is so good for the soul. When I heard our Holy Father Pope Francis talk about some interviewers said, how do you consider yourself? He said, I'm a sinner. And in his recognizing his sinfulness, that he, the Pope, having to go to confession, in sharing this with you, I have to go to confession. And there's no one who's listening to me who's not a sinner. The darkness is with us each of us in a particular way. And so over the course of the next weeks, and as we prepare for Christmas, I will be going over various areas of the darkness that can come into our souls. And that which breaks a family, that which breaks a human heart, that which breaks a parish, that which breaks a world, And so as we go over these particular areas that that our Lord will bring to light over these days of Advent so that we can do a searching, fearless inventory of our souls and our lives so as to bring further light into me, the into me see that God sees into each of us so that each of us now can become more a light in the world. You to your wife, you to your husband, parents to their children, brothers and sisters to each other, friends to one another, neighbors to each other, and even enemies. Because the light that's coming into the world is Jesus Christ. And he's going to bring his peace to all mankind. Yesterday, also, there was a whole family came in from Cleveland. And they, they, had, they, they wanted to visit with me. They had been listening to this podcast. They drove in, and it was a marvelous experience. We had Mass here together. And they each went to confession. And each one finding a new depth of love and light inside themselves. 
There were young people, children, parents, and it was a marvelous gift of a kind of a sign and a symbol to me at the beginning of this Advent season. And they left very joyful and very happy. And I certainly was very, I was happy. I went to confession. I was happy. They came and I was able to administer this sacrament. And I'm very joyful this opening day of Advent that I can offer this opportunity to everyone who's listening that each of us can grow more deeply into union with Jesus Christ. Each of us who has been baptized can get to make more and more the connection with him. It is he in us that can radiate. The light of the kingdom of God is Jesus Christ. He is the light, and he radiates through you and me. There are saints among us, like John Paul, like Mother Teresa, who radiate the light of love in the world. And you and I can become saints in our day. That's what a saint does. A child once was thinking of the stained glass windows in the church and was asked, who are the saints? And they said, the child said, the saint is one who lets the light shine through them. And this Advent season, as we come into this era of darkness, is going to be a season of light. Christmas is a season of lights. We're going to radiate more powerfully he who is within us. That Romans text, I believe, is a is one that points out what it is that we want to look at with regard how we enter into the darkness. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced. The day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the desires of the flesh. In other words, it's time to awaken, Paul is saying, from this darkness and sleep that we may have entered. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and into all our lives over this past year or over these months, and we have come into this darkness. And then he says, put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the light, not in orgies or in drunkenness. Now, if you've been drinking too much, and if, you, if that is what's going on, your conduct is getting more and more slovenly because of your drinking that you are conducting yourselves in this way, I think it's a, it's a magnificent thing to take some kind of inventory there. Not in promiscuity and lust. Well, you know, that very often run across people, especially men who, and, and some women, who are addicted to pornography. And this is this one of the things that separates you from Jesus? And what is there in, in, in this area of your life that is taking you away from living in peace with purity, chastity, and holiness? Also, he says here, not in rivalry and jealousy. Those of us who find that in our lives, 
the, as we approach this Christmas, there's a tension between me and some other people where we, we have this rivalry and we have this, this difficulty that exists between members of my family and me. Or there's jealousy between me and people in my neighborhood or the people in my parish. Even if we just took these three areas and begin to think about and pray about, how can I change as I examine myself under the light of Christ? And what is that that would strike you of what I would say today? Begin a journal. Wouldn't that be wonderful if you could just take a journal at the beginning of this Advent and make it your journal, your Advent journal for 2013, my preparation for Christmas. And in it, you begin to ask our Lord, in these particular areas of your life, where have I found myself and what do I need to do an inventory on? And how can I ask you, Father, How can I say to you, Jesus, how can I ask you, Holy Spirit, how can I ask you, Mary, to intercede for me in this? How can I ask your your power and your grace so that you who dwell in me, because I am baptized in the name of the Father and in the name of Jesus and in the name of the Holy Spirit, you are the Trinity that dwells within me. When I come to celebrate Christmas this year, I would like to have a more radiant power from you, Father, who have sent your Son, Jesus, into my soul in this world. For you, Holy Spirit, to enlighten me by your understanding, your light, your revelation, what that darkness is in my soul, because I can never come to recognize what separates me from Jesus by my own eyes or by my own power. When Jesus says today, I'm going to come and you'll be the one left behind, what is there in me now that he would leave me behind? Where is there in my soul that which separates me from him. Can I suggest that if you just maybe sit at your desk or sit at your prayer chair, and as you are listening to this, that you would you would do a little inventory and that you would go over in your, in your mind and your heart some area of your life that needed thinking and praying that you reflect again on the words that from the scriptures and that the text itself will give us an opportunity because it is the word of God that's speaking to us. And, and that each day that we will, we will make this journey toward Christmas and this journey inward as we look into some of the dark areas of our life and those places that have separated me from Jesus Christ. My sinfulness is that which I am going to try to ask God's grace to first enlighten me with it and then ask his grace that I can become more deeply in union with him who is my Savior. The opening prayer for the Mass today is grant Your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at the coming, so that gathering and gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, who is in my heart, who is within me, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us listen to the words of our Lord once again. Listen with your hearts. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So will it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of the night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. You've been listening to Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. To hear and or to download this conversation, along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com, or you can find it within the free Discerning Hearts app. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission which is to offer rock-solid and authentic spiritual formation freely to souls around the world. And if you feel us worthy, consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax-deductible to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about DiscerningHearts.com and join us next time for Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essef.